and welcome to our service of morning prayer on this Sunday the 19th of April. Some verses from our psalm set for today, Psalm 16. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord, and apart from you I have no good thing. So, Almighty God, I choose to lay down my life as a morning sacrifice for you. Pour out your mighty resurrection power through me, that Jesus may be revealed and your kingdom come in power, changing me and redeeming the world. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. May Christ the day star dawn in our hearts and triumph over the shades of night. May Christ, the true and only light, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. And so I light our candle now. A reminder now, when we pray, we are never alone as we welcome the Lord's presence through the power of his Holy Spirit to be with us at this time. The Lord is my light and my salvation. My God shall make my darkness to be bright. As we meet together this day, May the light and peace of Christ be with you. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day that you have made. As we wake refreshed from sleep, Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. May everything I think Everything I say and everything I do this day be thoughts, words and actions that float on the breath of your Spirit, my God. So then let us pray with one heart and one mind, taking a moment now to think about all those occasions when we've failed the Lord, where we've marred his image in us, and let's invite that God of hope to be enthroned in our lives this day into every stressful situation, stubborn and seemingly hopeless situation and relationship. Almighty God, with my whole heart, I confess to you my forgetfulness of your commandments, 
my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts I have done to others and the good that I have not done. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive me and raise me to newness of life in him. And so may Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you, forgive you your sins and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This I call to mind and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Great is your faithfulness. For they are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Great is your faithfulness. And our first readings this morning. Our first reading comes from Acts chapter 2. And that's followed then by the letter of First Peter chapter 1. Give me one moment whilst I just pull this up. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me because he is of my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. And our second reading from First Peter. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, 
though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first hymn this morning, you will find the words on the leaflets that was passed out on the church in the home. Crown him with many crowns. Gracious God, may our hearts and lips be filled this day with new praise and thanksgiving for you. We think of how we might crown the Lord, crown him in our lives, crown him in our hearts, in our thinking and in everything we do. And so we can say together now this canticle of praise. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell out his salvation from day to day. 
Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. Honour and majesty are before him. Power and splendour are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honour and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. With righteousness he will judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And our Gospel reading for today is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. And whereas that's a beautiful reading, it's not John's gospel. So now we go to John's gospel, chapter 20. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, His disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God, Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Our reflection this morning on our readings comes courtesy of of Anne Pilling. Today is sometimes called Low Sunday. Not because church attendance swelled by Easter usually shrinks again, but perhaps because the pomp and finery put on by some high churches is set aside for more workaday vestments. 
In the 4th century, St. Augustine referred to those who were newly baptised on Easter even, putting aside their special white robes after this Sunday and resuming their ordinary clothes again. If we didn't know this, we might be forgiven for thinking that today may very well be called low after this strange Easter, which, in spite of our changed circumstances, has hopefully lifted up our hearts. Because here we are again, still in lockdown, with no prospect of anything changing much for weeks ahead. May you live in interesting times. Uh, This is said to be a Chinese curse, meaning may ill befall you. But just now, we would be better off living in uninteresting times. When, in the words of U.A. Fanthorpe, only dull peace sprawled boringly over the earth. Being locked in, even for those who are used to solitude, is peculiarly difficult now because it has, for very good reasons, been imposed upon us. We did not choose it. And with Brexit on the back burner, coronavirus fills the newspapers. Self-help articles are being spewed out every hour on the hour. Now, we are fortunate to live in a beautiful part of the world We are able daily to lift up our eyes unto the hills from where does my help come. My help comes from the Lord who has made heaven and earth. Those very familiar verses from Psalm 121. But today's psalm, Psalm 16, echoes this conviction. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. And I said to the Lord, you are my Lord, and apart from you I have no good thing. Peter quotes this psalm in today's reading from Acts. I saw the Lord before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. And after the baptism of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, this once cowardly disciple has become a new man. Now fearless and bold, he proclaims his faith in the resurrected Christ. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Small wonder that those who heard him were cut to the heart. But another name for today is Thomas's Sunday. For today, the story from John's Gospel of Thomas's demanding physical proof that Jesus had indeed been raised from the dead is traditionally read in churches. Doubting Thomas has often had a bad press, so I was glad to discover that some traditions actually celebrate this disciple on this day, glad because his story is central to what Easter is all about. It addresses so pointedly the place where I suspect most of us now are, both those who believe and those who struggle to believe. For what on earth is happening to us all? Can we really trust God's promises? Is he really our refuge and strength? Or are these just empty words? Thomas was scrupulously honest. The others had seen Jesus or had seen clear signs that he had risen from the tomb. But he had not. How moving is his response to the proof that Jesus offers him the pierced hands and the pierced feet. Just five simple words. My Lord and my God. Yes, Jesus does reprove him, saying that it is more blessed to believe when you have not seen. But in today's language, that is a very big ask. Most of us are like Thomas. The crowds that constantly milled around Jesus desperately wanted a sign. They saw him as a miracle man. Well, we don't live in an age of miracles, but now, more than ever, do we not long for one, for a deliverance from this corona darkness that is affecting the whole world. George Fox, the founder of the Quaker movement in the 17th century, spoke of his desperate search to find someone that spoke to his condition. He could not find such a person among priests and preachers, and then one day he wrote this, I heard a voice which said, There is one, Jesus Christ, that can speak to thy condition. The Lord showed me so that I did see clearly 
that he did not dwell in these temples that man had commanded and set up, but in people's hearts. His people were his temple, and he dwelt in them. Temples, churches, chapels and meeting houses are all shut up. And we miss these sacred spaces. But the love and power of the risen Lord Jesus is powerfully abroad. Many doctors, nurses and other NHS workers have lost their lives to save others. Jesus himself said, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And all of us are experiencing, though at a necessary distance, the love and care of other people as never before, in what Wordsworth called the little nameless, unremembered acts of kindness and of love, except that we will remember them when all of this is over. We long to put our arms again around the people we love, and today, the risen Christ is speaking to our condition. So let us take heart. We will meet again. And in renewing our love for one another, we will meet him. And so we can say together the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So now we come to our time of prayer together. Our prayers this morning have been prepared for us by Christine Hallis. Everything I have received, Lord, has come from you. Everything for which I hope will derive from your love. Everything I enjoy is from your goodness. So blessed be God forever. I love you, Lord, for you heard me when I cried out to you. I called to you in dire need when I was overwhelmed with troubles and sorrows, crushed with anguish, and you saved me. You were so compassionate to me, you kept me from falling into harm's way, and you comforted me. Lord, how can I repay you for all your goodness to me? I will offer you my thanksgiving. I will keep close to you and praise your name. Words from Psalm 116. And so, Lord God, let us pause and remember all the good things that you have given each one of us in this time of trial. We thank you that Jesus came to teach us how to live and then also took all our wrongs with him on the cross so that we might be cleansed of all our sins. We ask you to give us strength with the help of the Holy Spirit to follow in your footsteps and to do your will, however uncomfortable or daunting that might be. We give you thanks for our beautiful dales, for our churches in the benefice, for our very caring local community. We pray that all who live here may seek to work for the good of each other in your spirit of love. We also give thanks to our Vicar Dave and Sarah who continue to guide us closer to you. We ask that you give your strength to them so they can keep on helping all those who live in this benefice. 
We thank you for making this wonderful world with the soil that gives us food, the trees that bring forth abundant fruits for us and the creatures, the birds, all the animals on the land and those in the sea. Help us to put right all the wrongs done by us humans in spoiling this planet with plastics, pollution and greed. Heavenly Father, help us in this time of need as we try to overthrow the coronavirus. We give thanks for all our health workers, whether they be cleaning the floors, providing supplies or doctors and nurses fighting the virus. We also remember all those who have given themselves up as drivers, bringing important medical requirements and food to us, and all other workers helping to keep the country safe. Give them strength and wisdom to lean on you, O God. And Holy God, we pray for those who are suffering or ill. We ask that you give each one strength and the knowledge of your supporting love. Let us spend a few moments now to bring before our Lord any who are known to us who are suffering this day. Finally, we pray for those who have lost family and friends as a result of the virus and for those who mourn the loss of loved ones in recent weeks. Today we remember Alexander Lambert, Derek Spence, and Jim Whaley. And we give thanks for the lives of those who have gone before us and have now entered into your presence. We ask that you will give us strength to follow the example of their lives. Merciful God, we bring all these prayers to you, knowing that you are our loving and caring Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned and the way to life stands open before us in our Saviour Jesus Christ. And so, as our Saviour has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Christ as a light illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and on my right. This day be within me and without me. Lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. Christ as a light. Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and on my right. And our prayer of blessing, which we can say together. Loving God, pour out your blessing on us, that we may become the church that you have called us to be. Bless this church with an increase in knowing your presence. Bless this church with release and renewal in the Holy Spirit. Bless this church with a newfound love and liberty in Jesus Christ. Bless this church with your protection. Bless this church with a new power and freedom to share the good news in our community. Bless this church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In keeping with the theme of blessing, the other song that was on our Church in the Home sheets this week is a contemporary song simply called The Blessing. Make his face. 
So amongst all the little blips along the way in our time together this morning, at least it proves it's kind of alive, doesn't it, along the way. (laughs) May the grace of God uphold you, the peace of God surround you, the love of God flow from you, and the strength of God protect you. Lord, we offer you all we are, all we have and all we do and all whom we shall meet this day that you, Lord, would be given the glory. And so, as in the words of that blessing song, the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace.